Hi, my name's Dan, and this video is one in a series that I'm doing about using AI in Unreal. And um, we're finally going to get to the stage where we're going to start talking about a thing called behavior trees, which is where the actual AI exists, as it were. So the setup that I've got is um, how I finished the end of the last video uh, with a couple of things added. So um, I've got a, uh, a character which I've created uh, in a previous video. I've got an AI controller, which I created, which is plugged into the character. If you don't understand pawns and uh, controllers, go to the first video in this series. For that. I've set up the nav mesh, which you can see in here, which is the green stuff over the, uh, over the floor. Again, the previous video talks about the nav mesh. I'm just gonna hide that by using the P key. I've just pressed it and nothing's happened. Let's try again. What's going on? There we are, so successful. Okay, now the other thing that I've done is I've got some assets here that weren't here at the end of the last video. Uh, they're just an example behavior tree that I've created to, for us to have a look at. Don't worry, we're actually gonna create behavior trees. This is just to kind of show you some of the very basic principles. So I've double clicked on that to open up the editor and you'll see it looks a little bit like uh, the visual scripting that you get in Blueprint classes, um, but it is different. Uh, once again, we have nodes, but these arrows aren't really wires. They might be called paths, okay? And it doesn't, unlike the uh, what you might expect for a Blueprint script, it doesn't run uh, left to right in the same way. Uh, yet it still kind of does, but it runs top to bottom and then left to right. You'll see there's various kinds of nodes. There's some colored stuff going on here. Um, I'll talk about that quickly soon. Um, I'm just highlighting over. So execution starts with the root node, which kind of makes sense. Um, and the path that it's going to follow is it's going to come down, uh, go from top to bottom, but then when it hits a node that has several arrows coming out of it, like the selector node, um, it goes, it does them in turn. Now the selector node and the sequence node uh, are a little bit complicated and special, and the next uh, video is going to explore those in a lot of detail. Uh, I don't want to focus on them right now. Uh, so, But to cut a, a story short, they may or may not execute all the different arrows that come off the bottom, the selectors and the sequence. Okay, but let's, let's imagine that it's going to do everything. So execution starts at the root, comes down to this selector, and then it comes down, so it's the left-hand path that it follows to this sequence node, and then it comes down to this purple node here. So purple nodes are called task nodes, and they're the things that actually do something. And what your AI is controlling is the order in which and whether or whether or not they do these particular tasks that are at the bottom. So to recap, we've come down here, and then after that task is finished, we could be going here, and then that composite is finished. So we're back up to the selector, we're coming down here. Nothing else here, so we're back up, coming down here to a sequence node. There's two off here, that one, then that one. Uh, back up, and then we're down here. There's another sequence node, so we've got stuff coming off here. So this one next, then this sequence node, this one next, and then this one finally. And if everything has gone according to plan, it's finished, and it will then just start again. Okay, so we'll keep cycling through this over and over. Now, I've explained that uh, the sequence of the selector nodes are special nodes which uh, control the flow of the AI execution. And we'll explore those more in the next video. Uh, I've explained that the purple bits down here are tasks. That's actual behavior things that are happening. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the last a couple of things are there's blue things. Um, a later video is going to explore, explore these. A blue thing is called a decorator, and that's like an if statement. Um, it, so it does conditional execution. And a um, the other thing is a green, which is a uh, called a service. And that's even weirder because that runs another, effectively another task in parallel whilst this stuff's going on. So it makes two things go on at once, or more if you want them. Okay, so that they can be possibly the hardest thing to work out. Uh, but again, another video later in the series will be looking at services as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get rid of this one because that's 
the stuff in there makes absolutely no sense. It was all just thrown in there to show you the different constructs that are in. So I'm going to delete the whole load of those and create a new one, which is just going to be a simple AI that's not really going to do anything apart from report back out to the screen using the text. Um, so the first thing to do is to actually create a, um, a behavior tree. And I've right-clicked in the content area, as you might imagine, and I need this artificial intelligence uh, bit here, and it's a behavior tree. And then I'm going to change the name of it to STLK underscore B tree. I'm going to call it. <coughs> then I'm going to open it up. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, we just have a root. And we're going to make some more nodes up here. Uh, so the way to do this is similar to the way we use pins and wires in uh, in the Blueprint scripting. Um, and we highlight this this panel here which is like a pin and we can pull down and we start to get an arrow and when we let go it gives us some options and the options at this level are i could have composites which are a selection sequence or a simple parallel and we're not going to go there because that's just too complicated um, again i'll emphasize i'm not going to explain what's going on in sequences and selectors yet um, but i'm going to create a sequence because what we can't do is we can't just bring a node out and do a task straight away. Uh, we've got to have some kind of conditionality and some kind of control. Otherwise, there's really no point to the AI. And in fact, what we're making here is a pointless AI. It's not going to do anything that's actually got any decisions based on it. So once we've done that, we can again get this bottom panel from the sequence and drag off. And this time, tasks are available. Um, so there are several tasks. There's some default tasks we can use here. There isn't a one that I can see that easily uh, produces uh, text to the screen. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create our own task for that. So I'm just going to go out of that. I've just left clicked off it. And up here in, these, in the taskbar, there's uh, taskbar. There's this button, new task. So I'm going to click that, and it's going to create a new task. And it's automatically opened it up. Now, what's happened is that as I minimize those down, is created a new asset. So tasks are also assets. They're a bit like uh, Blueprint classes, to be honest. Um, and I'm going to rename that ST, okay, because it's given it a default name, which isn't very good. And I'm going to call it um, Talky Task. So I'm going to double click on that to open it up. And we've got an event graph. And the event that we want is um, <coughs> execute, uh, event receive execute, which starts execution, and then we need to get to the end, which is going to be that one that also came up, which is finish execute. But then I say finish execute. Okay. In other areas of Unreal, if you had a, a system like this, it would put those in automatically. When you put uh, functions in, you get the beginning nodes and the end nodes automatically. Uh, you get some starting events to work with when you've got a, an event graph in a, in a Blueprint class. Unfortunately, in, the, uh, in AI tasks, it doesn't do these two nodes, which you're always going to need. So you need to know that you want the event receive execute and the finish execute the word that you you need to search for these, if you're not sure, is the word execute. And that helps you find either of them. And we're just going to do something in between, uh, which is the print string. So we're actually in normal blueprint uh, style uh, visual script now. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that that's been successful, um, because that's important for the operation of the, the sequence. Okay, so we're going to compile that and close that down. We're back to the tree. And now when we drag down and we choose the task drop down, that STL talky task is available. Now I put that name with an underscore after the STLK and I put task without a space after talky. And what it's done is it has looked at the camel case that I've been using and the underscore and it's removed them I don't really know why Unreal does this. I think it's maybe thinking it's making something more uh, readable. Uh, but be aware that it does this slight changing of names for when you get them in drop-down boxes from what you have. 
So that task just should now run down here and say hello, and then it's going to keep going over and over again. So that's what you're going to say here. The one thing that we haven't done is that we've created this behavior tree, but we haven't told anything that it has to use this particular behavior tree. And we need to do that inside the AI, the AI controller, which we created earlier. Double click that, it's got no um, scripts in it yet, so it, it goes to that kind of minimal uh, editor, uh, but it's easy to click on that and get it up. And we'll, what we need is when we're gonna start playing is we're actually gonna run that AI. So we're gonna go run, um, and that's a behavior tree. Of course, it's the American spelling of behavior. <clears throat> the target itself, that's fine. Uh, we need to select which behavior tree we're gonna run. Uh, and there's only one available in our project, which is the one that we've created. So that's that one. So all being well, um, when we press play now, the AI controller, which is inhabiting this character, this female character over here, will start saying hello over and over again. It's not doing any movements or making anything happen. We'll explore that in, later in the series of videos. This is just to show you how to plug in a behavior tree and get it started. And lo and behold, yes, it's doing exactly what we expected. It, obviously, this is a stupid way of going about something that you really don't want in your game anyway, something saying hello over and over again. It is just to do that demonstration to show how these things plug together. So in the next video, as I've kept saying, we're going to have a, a really good look at sequence and select uh, nodes in a behavior tree and what they do and how they work. But that's it from me for now.